The highlights for Resident Evil 3 for me are Jill Valentine and Nemesis. Jill is one of the two protagonists you play during your escape from Raccoon City, and she's a very easy character to root for. Granted, she is a little stuck up and suspicious of everybody at the beginning of the game, but you can't really blame her after going through the events of Resident Evil 1. Once she realizes that I'm the only person she really has to worry about laying on top of her, she loosens up. I rooted for Jill a lot because she gets her butt kicked, just tossed around on every building surface imaginable, crawling through sewers, getting infected, and yet she still keeps pushing on and is still brave. And I'm telling you bro, if Leon ever saw her dodge roll, Ada better be freaking worried. Carlos is the second protagonist and player character, but aside from his dumb hair, his assault rifle main weapon, and his Carlos PUNCH, I felt him largely forgettable. Now Nemesis is the other big highlight of the game, and he definitely deserves his name. This hulking, unstoppable force of nature, this beast, will chase you down through 85% of your total playtime. And while he's not that scary in a strict gameplay sense, when you're forced to run away from him, he's easy enough to dance around. There's a dodge function in this game, and when you're actually fighting him in a proper boss fight, dodging his attacks is as easy as dodging any typical Souls boss. You just iframe dodge through it. But what makes Nemesis scary is his persistence. This dude will not give up, and every time you think you kill him, he always comes back. So after hours and hours of having to deal with this guy, when Jill finally does take him out for good, it was weird. It was like, uh, I didn't feel responsible as the player for beating him. I felt it was like I, I was really watching a movie. I felt like Jill took him out, not me. Even though I was the one controlling her the whole time. But yeah, when Nemesis goes down, I'm like, I'm howling. I'm going, Jill, 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 yeah! It's one of the most satisfying villain takedowns in video games in recent memory for me. The rest of the games, uh, Hustle and Bustle, is standard Resident Evil for the most part. Explore, do some puzzles, inventory management, and killing zombies. Generally, when I play Resident Evil games, I like to take out every zombie I come across. But in this game, at least in the city section, first half of it, there's just too many zombies to take out. You don't have the ammo for it, so you need to run past a lot of them. And then later on, once things get more narrowed in scope, then, you know, you can take out every zombie in your wake. For me, the game scares didn't come from, like, an atmospheric sense, like the Amnesia games. The scares came from the struggle of inventory management, specifically towards the late game. Resident Evil 3 does a good job of slowly making things harder and harder for you as the game goes on because they throw more special zombies at you, and then for them you're going to need more ammo, and then there, are, there were a lot of points in the game where I got really worried in how well I would be able to continue on because I was you know, running really low on supplies and I'm taking a lot of damage. I was like, thank god there are no ink ribbons in this game, because I was safe scumming like a mother towards the end game, man. In terms of performance and graphics, the game runs and looks great. I love the Resident Evil engine. It's incredibly optimized, and I wish... I don't know if Capcom does this, but they should. They should allow people to use their engine. You know, so we don't have to deal with that crappy Unreal Engine 5. My biggest complaint with the game is its short runtime. It only took me 7 hours to complete the game on normal. And yes, you can replay the game on harder difficulties and use the shop that unlocks after you beat it once to have like guns with infinite ammo and unlock extra stuff, but I've always been a one and done type guy when it comes to single player campaigns. I usually have no interest in replaying them, and that was the case for Resident Evil 3. At $40, I can't recommend Resident Evil 3 at full price, mainly because of the playtime, but I absolutely will recommend it whenever it goes on sale, which is often enough. I was lucky enough to buy it for just $10 when I decided to review it. For that price, it's absolutely worth it. But that's all I got for this one, brothers. I will see you guys later. Take care. Oh, come on, Jill. Don't, Jill. Jill. Please. Oh, my God.